Hey y'all, welcome to the latest edition of Read This. I'm Kristen Anderson, my pronouns are she, her, and I work at the Ashland branch. And over the past little while, we've featured four books in our Friday Reads, and we're gonna talk about those and suggest some other books if you've already read and like those. Um, we're gonna start with a book called 400 Souls. This is a unique book. We don't do a lot of nonfiction, um, but this one is uh, edited by Ibram Kindi and uh, Keisha Blaine. And it is multiple authors with very short author uh, uh, essays about the, um, the history of African Americans in our country. And it's called, it's subtitled as a Community History of African America, 1619 to 2019 you will see a host of really amazing, well-known authors doing these short essays. They're really teeny. They're like four to eight pages each. Um, so I thought we would talk a little bit about Ibram Kendi and his books, um, How to Be an Anti-Racist. And the other one that gets a lot uh, talked about a lot is Stamped from the Beginning. Um, and that is a history of racist ideas in America, which has spawned not one, but two young readers editions, one for teens, one for kids, both of them called Stamped. And you can find them in the list that we've attached. Um, and uh, the other editor, Keisha Blaine, has a book in our system as well. It's called Set the World on Fire, Black Nationalist Women and the Global Struggle for Freedom. Um, the compilation includes uh, well-known authors in their field. So each of the essays is written, many of them by people whose names I recognize and you might. So for example, um, Isabel Wilkerson, who's currently getting a lot of attention for her recent book, Cast, uh, about t 10 years ago wrote a book called The Warmth of Other Suns, which is a, uh, a, a, a nonfiction piece about the Great Migration. And she does write the Great Migration essay for 400 Souls. So this is a, um, uh, a, a book worth approaching for kind of an overview, and, and, but interesting short deep dives into really specific topics within African American history. So recommend checking that out or some of these other books by editors and authors within the book. So it might be a good entry point to other authors if you're interested in nonfiction about um, the history of, of, of African America. Uh, next, we talked about where we featured Gambler's Anatomy by Jonathan Lethem. Uh, Jonathan Lethem um, is a favorite of JCLS tweets. Um, we've talked, he and I, about Gun with Occasional Music, music and Motherless Brooklyn. Um, Gambler's Anatomy is a more recent of his titles. It's about a backgammon hustler who thinks he's psychic. Um, Jonathan Lethem is known for kind of literary, gender-bending stuff. Um, when I started thinking about what I was going to talk about today, I uh, thought about a, a, an essay I'd recently seen that was published in Vanity Fair called The State of the Literary Jonathans. Um, this is an article about not only Jonathan Franzen, but also uh, Jonathan Safran, for, or Jath J sorry, Jonathan, I probably have used wrong last names since I've been talking. Jonathan Lethem <laughs> wrote Gambler's Anatomy. Jonathan Franzen is also a well-known Jonathan, as is Jonathan Safran Four. Jonathan Fran Franzen was famous for getting sideways with Oprah Winfrey when his book, The Corrections, was selected um, uh, for Oprah's book club, probably, it's probably like 20 years ago now, sorry. Um, and um, so this is not a current event, but the, there was a period at the end of the 1990s and the early 2000s when all three of these Jonathans were kind of in, uh, it kind of the peak of their the liter the popular literary like this that intersection of literary fiction and fiction that's selling a lot of copies, um, and uh, this article from Vanity Fair, the state of the literary Jonathan's, is really about how publishing has changed in those twenty years and how um, what we're seeing now is um, much more diverse in terms of literary fiction. So you're seeing, um, you know. 
buzzy authors like Sally Rooney and um, and Jessamine Ward who are getting big advances as well. So, so some of it's about the publishing and not just the nature of the writing, which you kind of have to be a book nerd to care so much about, but it's really interesting. Um, and um, if you're interested in reading that um, book we'll, or that article, we'll try and link in the um, in the uh, the notes about the, the of the YouTube video. Um, so Jonathan Franzen um, also has a new book coming out. Like I said, he wrote the corrections, but he's got a new one out com coming out called Crossroads. Um, and the most recent book by Saffron Four that's fiction is Here I Am. Um, so those are also all worth checking out, but also uh, just kind of an interesting look at, a, at, at how, um, how publishing has changed and um, how the focus on, uh, on um, diversity and away from kind of that very uh, white male middle class perspective has, um, has evolved over time. Another book that we featured on Friday Reads was one called Good Neighbors. And uh, what I think is interesting about this one is it's an interesting um, uh, opportunity to talk about marketing language in books because this was billed as a crucible retelling that is um, Celeste Ng meets Shirley Jackson. So um, I'm gonna break that down a little bit because that's kind of um, a lot to unpack, um, as they say. I, I actually haven't read this book. I wanna read it so I understand what all of that means, but marketing language is fascinating because what they're trying to do is find people, like books that, are, that connect with people who will likely like it in all of this, but you know, Celeste Ng uh, wrote Little Fires Everywhere. What we're talking about is kind of suburban, domestic, little bit of like mystery kind of thriller stuff going on. And then you've got Shirley Jackson, who is a classic author. If you um, haven't uh, read her in a while, what she's most known for and what m almost every school child in America has read is uh, the short story, The Lottery. Uh, she's written some long form pieces like We Have Always Lived in the Castle, super creepy. Um, definitely worth reading if you like creepy fiction. Um, so I'm curious what that means about what Good Neighbors by Sarah Langan is actually like when you read it. And then you throw The Crucible, which is of course a, a, a play set during the witch hunts in Massachusetts that's also an allegory for McCarthyism. So like I said, a lot to unpack there. Um, and the fourth book that we picked was one called Here is the Beehive by Sarah Crossan. And that book is uh, structurally interesting. It is structurally interesting because you do not see a lot of verse novels in adult. And this is a book that is written in free verse. Um, and um, I thought that in talking about this, I would also mention that if you read this and liked this, there are way more free verse novels in, uh, in teen. And most notably, most well-recognized most recently is uh, The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, but there are lots of other verse novels in the teen section and any librarian would be happy to help you find them. They can be a little complicated to find because sometimes you have to look inside them to figure out that they're in free verse, but there are a lot of them. Um, the other one I wanted to talk about is a book that is a first novel by someone who started as a poet that just got long listed for uh, the National Book Award, is an Oprah selection. Um, and it's a first novel written by someone who's primarily a poet. And that is the book, The Love Songs of W. W.E.B. Du Bois um, by um, Honoré Fanon Jeffers. And it is not written in verse. It is a, it is a lengthy, multi-generational epic um, about a family um, uh, from the Deep South with lots of different uh, uh, threads with, of family within it because it goes back to uh, the time when, uh, when slavery um, still was practiced and um, uh, and and so it, it's looking at um, kind of the evolution of this family that originated in um, with um, uh, indigenous Creek uh, people and then there are uh, 
there's there's like the hist the what you would expect in the history of the deep south in terms of plantations and um, you know practices that were frequently occurring during cha the time of chattel slavery that involved you know rape and that therefore um, uh, mixing of families um, in terms of white and black and then how that carried through into the present day. It is a lovely, compelling book that is hard to put down and one that will require that you be a little patient because we're gonna have a wait list for that one because of all of the awards. Um, but that is what I have for this month and um, we'll see you again soon.